In this video, we will discover all the DevOps-related updates that were disclosed during the Microsoft Build 2023 conference. If you've missed the conference, you haven't been able to catch up with everything or just want a recap of all the announcements made, this is the perfect video for you. And be sure to stay until the end because the last announcement will blow your mind. Or at least it blew mine. Hey, welcome back. I'm Carter Dave and here we try and do DevOps just better. So Build 2023, the flagship developer conference from Microsoft has just finished. And as you can see, I'm still in the hotel, but I wanted to give you this recap of all the announcement and news about DevOps as soon as possible. The main topic of the conference was AI, as you can expect, because you know it's been kind of the talk of the town for quite some time now. And so we've seen a lot of different AI related announcements and news but there has been a lot of announcement around DevOps as well, and also AI for DevOps, but more on this later. Anyway, today I wanna go through all of them with you. So let's jump straight into the news. And the first one is the GA of Manage Prometheus on Azure. Prometheus is the open source project from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and it's a common standard for monitoring containerized workloads, especially in Kubernetes. And while running self-managed Prometheus normally performs quite well for small workloads, it is really hard and complicated to scale for enterprise workloads. But at the conference, Microsoft announced that the fully managed service for Prometheus from Azure Monitor is now generally available. It has all that is expected from the open source system and ecosystem, while automating complex tasks such as scaling, high availability, and long-term data retention. And it can be used standalone from within Azure Monitor, as you probably know, or with Azure Monitor Container Insights in Azure Managed Grafana. And alongside this GA, Managed Prometheus is now also available in preview for Arc-enabled Kubernetes clusters. I'm personally very happy that this service is now GA. Given all the challenges I have in keeping up and running and performing well, my production instance of Prometheus on my clusters due to its size and performance requirement. But what about you? Will you be using this new managed service for Prometheus? Let me know in the comment section below. Next up, finally, a news for our beloved Azure DevOps, and this is big. In fact, GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps, which was announced uh, roughly back in October 2022, is now finally available in public preview for everybody for free. If you're not familiar with this, it basically brings all the features that GitHub Advanced Security has directly into the Azure DevOps platform, allowing developers to secure their code, secrets, and supply chain without leaving their workflow. And with this public preview, all the three main blocks of advanced security are available to use. We have code scanning, powered by CodeQL, which finds vulnerability in the source code and provides remediation guidance. We also have secret scanning that identifies secrets and can even block developers from pushing secrets into the repository so you don't have to remove that from the history, which we all know it's fairly painful to do. And finally, we have dependency scanning, which discovers vulnerabilities within the open source dependencies and automates updates alerts for developers. To access all of these features, of course, you first need to enable advanced security for Azure DevOps on your repositories. But once you've done that, all the future commits that may contain secrets will be blocked, so you will not have any risk, and the security scanning for secrets will happen automatically behind the scenes. Stay tuned because I will soon have a whole video dedicated to GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps. You will not want to miss it. All right, next announcement I want to talk about is the general availability of the Azure deployment environments. This service, which was announced last year, allowed developers to use the service to self-deploy the environments they need on demand using infrastructure as code templates. With the GA, we now get a specialized portal that gives developers a clear and easy interface to create and manage the environments. And developers can also use this portal to view, manage, and spin up dev boxes from Microsoft DevBox, marking a clear integration between those two services. Additionally, dev teams can decide if they want to build their environments using Terraform or Azure Resource Manager ARM, with the support for Terraform now finally in preview. Do you use Azure deployment environments? Let me know in the comments below. All right, before we move on to all the announcement related to AKS, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or if you find it insightful. This will not only allow more people to see this video and benefit from it, but of course, it will mean a lot to me. Thank you. First off, in the announcement list for Azure Kubernetes Service, or AKS, is the support for confidential containers. This new feature, which is now in preview, allows teams to run standard unmodified containers 
align with the Kata Confidential Containers open source project to achieve zero trust operator deployments with AKS. These containers can be integrated with all the normal apps and services you use for monitoring, telemetry, and so on and so forth, but in a trust execution environment, DEE. And this is possible because each pod is assigned its own memory encryption key, providing hardware-based confidentiality and integrity protection. In my opinion, this is a clear sign that Microsoft is focusing on enterprise readiness for their containerized workload, and this, in my opinion, again, it's always welcome. Another pretty cool thing that has been announced for AKS is the general availability of Azure Linux as container host. If you're not familiar with that, Azure Linux is a lightweight, reliable, and performant Linux distribution directly from Microsoft that is optimized for running on Azure. Actually, Microsoft has been using Azure Linux for running its own Azure services behind the scenes for quite some time, and now it's finally giving us the possibility to use that as well. If you want to try it out, getting started with Azure Linux as a host container OS is as easy as changing the OS queue a parameter in your Terraform or ARM or any other deployment tooling, and soon it will be also available as a selection in the Azure portal, of course. And still speaking about AKS, many other minor announcements were made by Microsoft at the Build 2023 conference, and I quote from Microsoft, they help accelerate app development, improve security, provide improved cost management, and offer the option for long-term support. One of the notable mentions here is the availability of the long-term support, which will grant a two-year windows for support on a specific version of Kubernetes starting with 127. Also cool is the possibility to have um, at scale upgrades for clusters using the Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager, which allow you to orchestrate the upgrade of multiple clusters uh, in your fleet. Lastly, Microsoft has made available something they call transactable Kubernetes apps. These are first and third party Kubernetes ready solutions from the Azure Marketplace, which one can purchase and securely deploy on AKS with easy click through deployments. And as developers and partners, we can also create our own apps and host them free or paid for on the marketplace. I'm not sure if I or other experienced people will want to use those kind of uh, apps or ready-made apps with one-click deployment, but I think it's probably a good solution for unexperienced people or people that have not too much confidence into the platform and they want to go straight in, in using Kubernetes. All right, we are almost at the end, but one more thing. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is going to be a good one. As I mentioned before, the whole theme of the conference was more around AI. And for Microsoft, this means Copilot. Copilot is the name that Microsoft gives to its own AI assistant. So we have seen a lot of Copilot versions. We have Copilot for Microsoft 365. We have obviously GitHub Copilot. We have Copilot for Windows. Yeah, GitHub for Windows. But the most notable announcement for me is Copilot for AKS. And yes, you heard it right. AKS will soon have its own integrated Copilot AI assistant. There isn't much detail about the service yet, or even what it will be able to do for sure, but from the demo they gave, and you can see on screen, seems like it can assist with cluster operations like scaling up and down, and also it will help you generating YAML deployment files and Kubernetes configuration for you. I am super excited about this new announcement, and I cannot wait to try it out for myself. And stay tuned, because I will have a video trying it out as soon as I get access to it. And here you have it. This was your recap for all the DevOps-related announcement and news that Microsoft made during this Build 2023 conference. And let me know in the comment section below what your uh, favorite announcement was and your favorite news was. And also check out this video over here in which I talk about all the announcement and news released during Build 2022 a year ago. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.